starts well. Um, can't hear. Can't hear. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you very, very well. It's a lot of people. The last time I spoke before a crowd of this size was three years ago. Ironically enough, at my father's memorial, my father, for those of you who, who didn't get a chance to meet him, Eli Verdugo was one of the pillars of Yeshiva High School. He, along with Rabbi Torres, Rabbi Brander, and a couple of you guys that are here, helped build the school that you guys uh, go to now. And ironically enough, the last time I was at an event here at this ballroom was at my senior year, a uh, sport awards banquet. It's great seeing all these faces of parents whose uh, kids that I train, of, of, of coaches, Mrs. Orly Kanner, Mrs. Greer, Rabbi Horowitz, Rabbi Torchwell, all these people that helped raise me when I was in high school 10 years ago. Coach uh, Lieber was joking right now when Rabbi Torchwell mentioned you guys didn't go far to get anybody to the ring. And when you were talking about my career, he looks over to me and he goes to glory days. And I said jokingly, and I'm, and I'm serious, today is the glory day. Uh, the fact that we're able to come back 10 years later to my school, which at the time, I'll be honest, when I was here, I didn't want to come back uh, <laughs> at all. Feeling was unusual. <laughs> Speaking of coming back full circle, it's an honor to be back here. One, as the conditioning guy for all the athletes to get you guys physically, mentally prepared. Uh, two, as a fan. I'm a big fan of the school. I've seen how you guys have grown consistently in a healthy manner over the past 10 years, and I, I believe you guys have tripled in size almost uh, since I was at school. I was talking to Rachel last week, and, and, and we decided that I was going to speak, and we decided the topic was going to be sports and how they correlate to real life, on and off the court. What lessons have I taken? What things have I learned in sports over the course of my career? Um, that I can share with you guys to help you guys a little bit. There's a concept in sports, bear with me for a minute, called flashing to the basketball. For a lot of you basketball players who have gotten to work with, and even non-basketball players, you guys will be able to relate. Flashing to the ball is, I would say, my favorite concept in sports. And it states, then imagine you're in a half court set, so you're attacking the basket, and the basket is over here, and one of your teammates is being double teamed or trapped on one side of the court. Now you have an option. You can flash towards the ball, which means run from the opposite side and come help him out, or you can stand and you can wave, I'm here, I'm open. It took me many, many, many years to learn this. But life rewards you, and sports reward you when you make yourself available to the ball, when you flash to, to the ball. What that means is, your friend is in need. Now we'll take it from on the court to off the court. Your friend is in need, your teammate is in need. He needs to be bailed out. You have to come help him out. Don't make a phone call and see how he's doing. Go help out, reach out, flash to the ball. I think it's a concept that transcends sports. It's helped me throughout my career. And I'm going to tell a little story to reflect on that and how flashing to the ball, not only waiting for an opportunity, but going to make an opportunity. Willing your way, being relentless, persistency, things that I've learned in sports, I believe have taken me uh, to where I am today and hopefully far, far beyond. Um, in 2001, we were the first graduating class here in Yeshiva High School. Uh, and I'm not ashamed to say, my senior year in high school, I remember Rabbi Turchwell, or Brandon, or my father, may rest in peace, sat me down, and they basically told me that I was going to Yeshiva University. And I was dead set on playing Division I basketball. It's all I cared about at the time. I didn't want to hear it. I wanted to go play basketball. For those of you who don't have that much basketball background, I'm five foot nine and a half, 150 pounds. Not, I was never that good in basketball, but in my mind, I <laughs> thought I was the greatest player ever. <laughs> and it all goes back to flashing to the ball, to willing yourself to succeed. No one could have told me otherwise. That's what I wanted to do, and that's what I was going to do. So my travel coach, my senior in high school, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to go play college basketball. None of the college coaches knew it yet, but I was going to go play college basketball. 
we, over the course of a couple of months, my first and second semester of my senior year, we wrote a letter to every single Division I head coach in America. There's 337 of them at the time, I'm sure there are a little bit more now. And it was basically a personally, uh, a handwritten uh, letter. Um, this is who I am, these are my stats, this is the school that I go to, my GPA, who by the way is super important for any of you guys who want to play college basketball or not. You have to do well in school. We've all seen, well you guys haven't, but I've seen a lot of athletes that could have played college sports and didn't get the chance because they didn't do well in the classroom. You don't want to let that hold you back. Um, wrote a letter, got a couple of responses back. Some of the coaches said, thanks for your interest, we don't have any spots. Some said, I got a, a letter from Portland State. And I ran to my mom and dad and they said, there's no chance. So I you know, put it away, obviously. And I got a letter from uh, Hofstra University. Hofstra uh, is a private university on Long Island. Um, I didn't know anything about New York, but they were interested in having me play for their team. And I said, I'm going to Hofstra. I didn't have a guaranteed spot, mind you, but in my mind, I was already on the team. I get to campus my freshman year. I didn't get any scholarship money my freshman year, although the coach, Jay Wright, who coincidentally enough, when I got to campus, had left to take a new job, the guy who brought me in. Uh, so he told me you have a walk-on spot. For those of you who don't know, in college sports, there are scholarship spots for recruited athletes, and there's a walk-on spot for athletes who are good enough, but they don't have any money for, 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 for the athletes, and I said, come walk on the team. I get to campus, we have a tryout about a, uh, a month and a half into campus, uh, into the school year. Excuse me, I'm a little uh, nervous. Um, and I don't make the team. Nobody makes the team. 150 guys show up, we all try out. Two days, it was back to back in the evenings, no one made it. Everyone goes home, I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't know how many people I've told this story to, by the way. Uh, this is the story that I've shared with very, very, very close friends of mine and family, and I'm honored to share it now to 10 years later at the school that I could say raised me. Uh, so I had to get creative. And this goes back to, to a trait that I hope that over the next couple of years uh, at Yeshiva High School and as we continue to work is relentlessness. Re be relentless in anything you want. If you want to achieve it athletically, if you, and, I, and, and I joke, if you want to get a girl, whatever it is in life that you want. <laughs> I joke with my kids in my camp, I'm like, if you want it, go get it done. Whatever it is, just get it done. <laughs> Don't accept no, no for an answer. So I walked into the coach's office. I'm a little kid from the Yeshiva League in Boca de Tomer, and I said, hi coach, nice to meet you, my name is Yogev. And he goes, all right, I saw you working yesterday. And I said, I want to play on the team. He said, we don't have any spots, we have a spot as a manager. He said, I'll take it. He said, all right, are you sure you want it? I said, that's what I want. I had to be at practice every morning at 5.30 in the morning as a team manager, prepping the court, getting the water ready, the jersey, everything ready. They knew that I was a ball player at heart. They didn't have any spots for me. And I just stayed focused. For four days, I was the manager of the basketball team at Hofstra University. When all the guys were done training at night and they go home and we're done cleaning up the court, I come back to the gym and I train. And I play, and I play, and I play. If you guys know how a college uh, gym is set up, for the most part, you always have the head coach's office, whether it be on the first floor or overlooking the court with a glass window. So the coaches would stay late at night doing their work and they saw me train. They called me into the office on the fifth day and they said, we have a spot for you on the team. And I, and, and, and I was blown away and they said, your work ethic in the past four days is nothing that we've ever seen around here. You pick up the energy of the guys and we want you a part of our team. That year, I was honored enough to play at Madison Square Garden in front of 25,000 people. The Carrier Dome against Syracuse University in front of 33,000 people. Now, mind you, I played a little bit at the end, but... <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be in those situations. If it was up to anyone else but me. I wasn't supposed to be there. Anyone who I told that's where I was going, that was my goal. Knock me down, give me a break, focus on other things. What I want to pass on to you guys, make yourself available to, to the ball, quote unquote. Flash to the ball. If you guys want something done in your life, in your parents' life, if a friend is in need, if a community is in need, don't stand on the other side of the court and wave, I'm saying open, I'm open, and when you don't get it, you get upset. Come meet him halfway. Come say, I'm here for you, you're being tracked, you need, you need help, I'm here to help you. I would say out of all the things that I've learned in sports, that's the number one thing that I can share with you guys. And Rabbi Turchwell and all the heads of Yeshiva High School, the Weinbaum Yeshiva High School, I want to commend you guys for flashing to the ball 
last year and saying we want to change the sports culture at Yeshiva High School. We're willing. After 10 years, we realize this is the next step we want to take as far as athletics. I believe the school has eight teams, uh, eight great teams. I believe the school has 12 great teams. And it was an honor for me to come back this year. You know, I've had the privilege of working with professional athletes, college athletes, and believe it or not, you guys are some of my favorite because you guys have heart. And to me, that's what transcends above everything is heart. Will yourself to succeed. Don't take no for an answer. And this last thing, and again, I'm going I'm, I'm to reiterate it because it's so important. I'm not talking about sports. Off the court, flash to the ball. Make yourself available to a situation. If you want to get a scholarship to a certain university academically, maybe go intern in that school a certain summer. Go meet the right people you need to meet, the right professors. If you want to get into a certain course that you can't get into and it's closed off, find a creative way to get into that course. If you're slacking, it's, it's, it's second semester, we're all getting tired right now, we're already looking forward to summer. Finish up your exams hard. If you feel like you have a grade that you can't pick up, go to your teacher and I guarantee they will help out. But stand and say, what do I need to do to pick up my grade? Don't stand on the sideline and wait for life to pass you by, guys. I think, go, going back to the beginning of my speech, when my father passed, we had, all of us, my, 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 my mom, my sisters, myself, had an option to sit by and say, whoa, or to say, all right, we got a huge shock, we need to get up, take life by the horns, and, and, and take life by the horns, guys. That's it. Thank you very, very much for having me.